<laughs> no, 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 we're good, thanks. I found this yard. It was like that high. Walked up to the door, and I was done. This is it. I'm not asking another person, and I will never do this again. I am a candy bar and pop. It's just not worth it. This lady came to the door, and she said, yes. And I said, um, I was shy then. I said, can I, uh, I'd like to mow your yard. She looked at me, looked at that mower, and started shaking her head, and then she looked at her yard. And she said, well, how much? And Dad never told me what to say. I had no idea. So being the smart little kid I was, I said, well, how much will you pay me? She says, well, I'll pay you $20. This was in 1989. Now, a lot, a lot of you kids go, 89, and a lot of you adults are going, that was yesterday. What are you talking about? But in 1989, at 10 years old, I got paid $20 to mow this yard. I diligently pursued the goal. The goal was to make money to go get a pop and a candy bar that my dad, I'm sure, had plenty in his pocket but refused to give it to me for whatever selfish reason. <laughs> for all the selfishness in his heart, he was, not going to, he was not going to fork over that money to me. I'm his child. I am. He owes me. He owes me that. I'm his kid. This is not going the direction I wanted it to go. He owes that to me. Just a pop in a candy bar, Dad. What more could I? That's nothing. Go make your own money. So I did. And when she paid me, after two hours and plus of work, pushing that more. <laughs> Got that $20, and I went down to get and go right down the street. We don't even have those anymore, do we? How many remember get and go? Uh, everybody over 30 says, amen. <laughs> but I went in there, and I, and, I, and I remember walking in. This is the funny part. I spent all day for a pop and a candy bar. I sweated in the heat of summer. To purchase me a pop and a candy bar. I had the money that I made. I walked in there and I grabbed the pop. It was like what, 69 cents for 20 ounce or whatever it was. And the candy bar, less than that. And I walked up to the counter and he, the guy tells me the total. And I go, you know what? Never mind. I'm good. And I put it back. I worked so hard for that money that I wasn't willing to spend it that was free by the way we're talking about diligence frugality is like two weeks from now so get ready <laughs> but I diligently searched and I did everything with everything that I had every step that I took was everything I had to complete this job and the job was to make money for a pop and candy bar because my dad was selfish I tried everything I could. I did it to the very best of my ability. I wasn't about to give up until I reached the prize that I was willing to get. And by the way, long story short, I still mow this lady's yard once a week. And I've never charged her anymore. My first lawn. The first sucker to ever say yes. But I diligently work on her yard. I do it to the very best of my ability. Kids, you're fixing to go out and you're fixing to get jobs and you're fixing to buy cars. Don't do it if you can't do it right. That's okay. You can applaud. Don't do it if you can't do it right. Because you represent Jesus Christ. And he says, when you do it, do it in my name. So don't do it half but, pardon the expression, if you can't do it right. Don't even start it. 
Because God is looking for people. Employers are looking for people. I'm looking for people that are diligent. And that are willing to see it through. That no matter what the obstacle is, no matter what you're facing, you're willing to go that step. You're willing to go beyond that step to achieve what you wanted to do. George Washington Carver. As I was talking about him, some of you knew exactly who I was talking about. Some of you didn't. But we remember those. We, don't, we would not know who he was if he let his circumstance dictate what he was going to achieve. Nobody would know who George Washington Carver is. We wouldn't know where he came from. He would just be another slave. Possibly freed, possibly died, possibly fight in the war. We don't know. There were so many of them. There are so many people that allow their circumstance to dictate the outcome that nobody would ever know who they are. But this man was different. Why? This man was willing to do whatever it took. Taught himself how to read. Taught himself proper grammar. Learned on his own and then sought out those that would teach him. Diligence. Dedication. Jesus tells us, blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing, not caught in idleness. Matthew 24. So Jesus expects responsibility and consciousness from us. He, he expects us to do something and be diligent with what we have. We all know the parable of the talents. To one he gave a few, to one he gave two, and to one he gave one. And that one just didn't have the diligence, right? That one decided to take his talent and take that one thing that Jesus gave him or that the master gave him and go and bury it because he was afraid of what would happen. Jesus is telling us, you know what? You're going to fail. That's okay. You're going to mess up. That's okay. You're going to do wrong. That's okay. But what matters is that you're trying to do something to the best of your ability. You say, well, I can't invite anybody to church. Nobody is going to listen to me. How do you know? You're not being diligent. You're not trying. You're not attempting. I'm not saying this specifically. I'm just saying, if the shoe don't fit, please don't wear it. It was never designed for you. But we never accomplish anything if we don't try. What was it Babe Ruth said? You missed every ball you don't swing at. The strikeout king? Nobody remembers all the strikeouts. They remember his home runs. Why? Because he swung. Because he was diligent. Because he did it consciously and with all the effort that he had. He just swung. Nobody remembers how many times he left home plate. And went the opposite direction of first base. But they remember every time he hit it and it went over the park. It went over the wall. They remember that. Hebrews 11.6 shows us God takes diligence seriously. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God can see who is serious about seeking him. We strive and he sets our goals for us. We have to strive to achieve those goals. That's what diligence is all about. In Luke chapter 16 and 12, if a man hath not been faithful with what is another man's, who will give what is his own? Jesus says, he who is faithful in what is the least also is in much but he who is unjust in what is least is unjust in much. So if you can't handle the little things, how in the world are you going to handle the big things? If you can't be diligent in your, in, in your day to day, how are you going to be diligent in the kingdom of God? If you struggle every day, you know, just to finish a task of making coffee. Mm, you're not fit for this church. 
That's not in the notes. I don't even know where that came from. Forgive me. In other words, if you're not serious about small responsibilities, how in the world are you going to handle the greater ones? God prizes diligence highly. We read in Proverbs 12, 27, diligence is a man's precious possession. Proverbs 25, 21, 5 in the Amplifies, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty. In fact, God demands diligence. He, need, he demands you to be diligent in everything that you do. Most don't like to talk about this because it's work. How many of us actually love to work? I mean, I just, <laughs> no offense, the two oldest guys say yes. <laughs> but they didn't do it very, you know, they just kind of like slipped up their hand. You know, one over here and one over here. Mm, yeah, I like to work. My dad loved to work. He still does. 33, 34 years for the same company. Day in and day out. I remember as the holidays approaching, if he was working, we just postponed the holidays. So we just weren't going to have it. We weren't going to have Christmas if dad was working. A lot of you kids are like, I'm opening my presents. I don't care who's there. <laughs> One year we had Christmas in March. We just kept the tree up until dad had a full weekend that we could enjoy Christmas with him. And you know what? We didn't complain because we knew the diligence of him day after day accomplishing the task that needed to accomplish because without his diligence there wouldn't be those gifts under the tree as few as they may be they were gifts mom did her best teaching us mom did her best you know raising us while dad worked and the big worst thing that we could possibly hear growing up is you wait till your dad comes home he'd wake us up He'd be like, mm -mm, hey, well, yeah, huh, what, Dad? So back and talk, back talk to your mom today, huh? My dad's like two in the morning. Oh, now you're gonna back talk me. <laughs> <laughs> Diligence. They diligently worked. They diligently raised us to the best of their ability, as unto the Lord. It was their diligence. It was, when we come in here service after service, we need to be diligently seeking him. We need to be diligently wanting everything he has for us. Don't just come in and have church just to have church. Come in and have church because you are the church. Amen. Diligently seeking God. Diligence is non-self-glory, self-discipline. Diligence is growth. A.W. Tozer said, We have snared by the coils of logic, logic, which insist that if we find God, we no longer need to search for him. Let me put that in layman terms. Just because you feel after his feel his presence doesn't mean you no longer need to seek after his presence. Just because you feel God one service doesn't mean you don't need to seek God the next service. Being saved is not a license to stop searching for his will. Being saved is a license to search for his will. Because I feel his presence makes me want to search more diligently and longer for more of his presence. Just because I feel, just because I have a victory in one area of life doesn't mean I'm going to stop diligently searching for a victory in another area of my life. It's diligence. Everything we do has to be done diligently. We spoke of character. We spoke of the courage, the foundation. We spoke of the loyalty. Now, we speak of the diligence. So important, church. So important that not just as Christians, but as individuals, as members of this society, that we take these lessons in character and we take them to heart and we try to understand that without diligence, you're not going to hold the job down. Without diligence, your relationships are going to fail. All relationships. You must have diligence. Diligence. 
what diligence is not. Diligence is not driven anxiety, ridden, burdened, perfectionism. That is not diligence. Dil- to, to the workaholic that puts his self ahead of his family, his church, even God, and, that, and to try to reach unattainable goals, that's not diligence. Uh-oh. Now y'all get quiet. I don't know any workaholics in here because I'm not one. (laughs) He is obsessed but not controlled. The workaholic ignores his own limitations and believes himself to be diligent but in reality is simply obsessed. I've been there in life. Where I thought, I got, my, I, got, I got my joy from work. I got everything that I needed because work provided it for me. So I had to go get more. I used to work all the time. I used to work day in and day out. Every weekend shift that I could, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. I didn't care if I missed church or not. Everything evolved around work and what work could bring me. That's not diligence, that's obsession. That's not healthy. Because I'm, I am being controlled by something other than me. Or by something other than God. I'm allowing outside sources to control me. Instead of the creator. I'm allowing the creation to control me. I'm allowing those things that he put in my life to control me. Not him. He gave those to me to help me and to benefit me. Not to wear me out and to use me. That's not diligence. Do not confuse drivenness with diligence. Diligence is productive and enduring. It endures. Drivenness is is like Oklahoma weather. I mean, it's going to change. Whatever drives you is going to change. It could be 63 degrees today and 15 below zero tomorrow. I'm going to get an amen for that. But, but diligence, diligence will drive you no matter what the weather is. There is no change to diligence. You'll just continue doing the right thing and diligently seeking him. Diligence has four faces. Listen, man, I'm closing. What? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Diligence has four faces. Number one, constancy. Temporary obedience is disobedience. Amen? So if you're you're only going to do something to a certain point, what's the point in doing it at all? Seeing it through. So diligence is constant. Temporary obedience is, is disobedience. Number two, diligence is instant. It's instant. Delayed obedience is disobedience. When I tell the girls, go clean your room. Well, I'll do it in a minute. That's disobedience. They might do it in a minute, but they're not, they're delayed. Come on. Number three, exactitude. Partial obedience is disobedience. Only doing something halfway that God tells you to do is still wrong. If I tell my girls to clean their room and they only make their bed, they disobeyed. Well, they made their bed because that's what moms say, right? Well, at least they made their bed. (laughs) No, they disobeyed. They didn't clean their room, but they made their bed. They only did it partially. They disobeyed. It's not diligent. Number four, observant care. Careless obedience is disobedience. If you don't have your heart into it and you're not doing it with concern and with care, then you're not doing it right. You're not diligent. Diligence is is responsible, it's orderly, it's steady, 
It's an application of God's power within me toward whatever responsibility is mine. That is diligence. Diligence, okay, so the Latin term for diligence is, I'm going to totally mess this up. It's diligentia. That sounds good, doesn't it? A lot of you wine drinkers out there going, that sounds like a fine wine. You need Jesus right now. It's derived from two words. One, to choose. The other one is to love earnestly. I'm going somewhere. The diligent, therefore, can make and be faithful to choice. The diligent love earnestly because they choose. There's death in every relationship if you fall back on the feeling of love. Love is not a feeling. Love is not something that you just feel. Yeah, you get those butterflies when the relationship first started. Some of you all have been married for a few years. Uh, Me and my wife just celebrated our anniversary this weekend, and then I shipped her off to California on Monday. I didn't ship her. She had a work thing going on. But, but it was just funny how that worked out. So I, that's why I've been telling people, oh, what'd you do on your, what'd you do on your anniversary? Well, we got ready to ship her off to California. Now she's having a good time this week. <laughs> what she doesn't know is I'm having a good time too, so praise the Lord. No. <laughs> Man, this is recorded, isn't it? <laughs> praise Jesus, I'm in trouble. My phone's fixing to ring. Woo! There is death in any relationship that depends on love being a felt thing, something that is just felt. There will be those moments and seasons where we must love not passionately, but earnestly. Diligence is earnest love, fervent love, love that's not just felt, but a love that's shown and done. Love is an action. It's an action, not a feeling. There are some days I wake up and I don't really feel like loving my kids. But I choose to. I don't feel like, like, oh, this relationship is just too much work. There were times I woke up in my marriage and I was like, this is not going to work. I just don't feel it anymore. But I had to be past that. I had to find that earnest love, that real love, that choice. I don't love the church because it feels good. I love the church because I want to. And all you that love the church should say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was 100%. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Diligence makes all of life a labor of love. All the way to the finish line. I will be in love because I choose to love. Not because I can fall in it or fall out of it or I didn't wake up one morning and go, well, I just don't love her anymore. I guess I'll leave. No, it doesn't work that way. I might not feel like doing it, but I will choose it because that's what what diligent love is that's what choosing diligence is when you have the character of diligence you will have the choice the choice will be easy it won't you won't be driven by your feelings you'll be driven by obedience you won't be driven by your feelings or emotions you'll be driven by your choice and all those that have been married longer than 10 years say amen Should have said all those still married after 10 years say amen. <clears throat> Diligently seeking God, Hebrews eleven six. 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We heard Sunday about a, about a woman with the issue of blood, which is, and, I, and I don't want to take anything away from that service, but one thing that really caught my eye 
or got my attention during this story was the woman was so diligent and persevered so much that, yes, she got her miracle and she was on the edge of her miracle and she achieved it, but she achieved it through diligence. She pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed through the crowd until she could just touch the hem of his garment, until she could just get to her goal. And so often the temperature in a room will change how we reach our goal. The music's too loud. The music's not loud enough. It's too hot in here. It's too cold in here. You got news for your church. It's always too hot in here. But the temperature is not going to change me achieving the goal of presenting, presenting this Bible study to you. I'm going to persevere. Just drink more water. I will achieve what God has set before me. The temperature of the room is not going to change that. All the crowd didn't change what that woman did. That woman persevered. That woman was diligent. Diligently seeking God. She achieved it. I am going to be obedient to his word no matter what. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to continue to seek and diligently do that which is required of me. I need more of God. I have to seek more of God. There was a, there was a man, blind Bartimaeus, who sat there on the side of the road. He heard Jesus was coming. He just heard about him. So he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Jesus, thou son of David. And the whole crowd hushed him. The whole crowd wanted to be quiet. We want to hear what's going on. We want to see God. Be quiet. You're interrupting us. But his diligence, his perseverance to see it through got the attention of Christ. Can you imagine if we had half that determination? Can you imagine if we had half that diligence? We would seek him no matter what. God is coming for a church that diligently finishes what they start. Who diligently, without fail, or with fail, but continues to, do the work that is set before them. God is looking for a people. that are diligent and that will do what they're called to do. Church, character matters. Diligence matters. In Jesus' name. Father, I realize that I can apply more concentrated effort in my pursuit of you. And that your will in my life. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to me the areas where I can make adjustments and how I need to make them. I ask you, Lord, right now, tonight, for clear revelation of my life's assignment. Lord, a clear revelation of my assignment so I can walk with greater focus and greater commitment to fulfill that purpose. Lord, whatever may be required of me, I pray right now that the Holy Spirit to come and, and help to apply the diligence in all that it entails. Strengthen me. Strengthen my inner man to lay aside the slothfulness in the areas of my life so that I can experience the reward of those that devote themselves and seek you and your will with all diligence. Lord, I receive a fresh grace from you right now in Jesus' name. 
help me, God. Help me to understand the power of diligently seeking you. Help me to understand, Lord, what all you have for me in your grace. And to diligently seek your presence and to diligently pursue your word and understanding of you, Lord. I pray right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's all stand in the presence of God. With every head bowed and every eye closed.